Hello and welcome Eid Mubarak to you from the southernmost Lok Sabha constituency of Indian mainland. We are here at the Kanyakumari Lok Sabha constituency just a few hundred meters down from me. That side is the southernmost tip of India's mainland and behind me the pictures that you saw is of that famous Vivekananda rock and the famous Thiruvalluvar statue which was inaugurated in 1999. The ancient Tamil saint who wrote the Tirukkural which embodied the entire essence of life in seven words. Perhaps best for modern day X, but what a fascinating read it is for anyone who understands and follows it. So we are here at the heart of Kanyakumari where we have come all the way from Chennai to Coimbatore to Virudhanagar to Tutukudi, now to Kanyakumari. That's our election journey covering different locations across South India. Fascinating contest here politically in Kanyakumari where this is the only constituency in Tamil Nadu where the BJP has consistently maintained around 30% vote share. It has a majority, 51 odd percent population of minorities, Muslims and Christians, which makes it a fascinating contest here between the Indian National Congress and the BJP. The INC, of course, backed by the INDIA Alliance and the DMK. In fact, just a short while from here, you have uh, Udayanidhi Stalin campaigning for the Congress candidate Vijay Vasant, uh, who has been campaigning hard here. Obviously, the BJP has Pon Radhakrishnan, two-time MP, someone who's contesting for his tenth time here. He contested has been contesting from 1996 onwards here in Kanyakumari. So I caught up with both of them. But first, let's listen to what Vijay Vasant, the Congress candidate, says. I caught up with him over some very nice elanir. Elanir is coconut water. That's the only way you can survive from the heat, the survive the heat and the humid conditions here. Listening. What's the secret of surviving an election campaign in Kanyakumari? Is it Elanir? <laughs> Elanir plays a vital role in this hot summer. But uh, we've been cooled down by the people's response. I would say the heat has been reduced due to the overwhelming uh, support from the people while you go for campaigning. Arima, that's a political <laughs> response that you've given me. So let me get to serious political questions. If there is one constituency in Tamil Nadu where the BJP has consistently had a 30% vote share on its own, it's been in Kanyakumari. Given the Annamalai factor, given that the Prime Minister has been campaigning here, are you nervous that they may just get past the post this time? Is there a sense of nervousness about the campaign here? No, no, not at all, not at all. Uh, because here, the Kanyakumari is a majority of the people are from the minority community. And what happens is, uh, here the people start realizing the need for change. You know, because you know the centre, how they've uh, reacted for the Manipur issues, or uh, the, how they handle the minorities. You know? So they were very clear in their mindset. And even in the case of uh, more polarization, you know, the people very clearly wanted to have a change. Not only in Tamil Nadu, as our CM said, even the 40, our BJP dominance is very, very low in Tamil Nadu. That's why Anamali went for a walk, PM's coming for a talk, uh, and all this happens. But uh, 40 out of 40 will be our alliance. This is one seat where the battle is seriously an INC, Congress versus BJP battle, if we can define that in Tamil Nadu, which is usually a DMK, ADMK state. Yeah, usually it is a uh, DMK, ADMK state, but in, when it comes to Kanyakumari, the national parties play a vital role. So it's, uh, here it is between the India alliances versus the uh, B BJP. Uh, so so the, what happens is the, the momentum is building up, momentum is building up, everyone is very busy with the campaigns and other things and all. But uh, as I said earlier, the people's response and people wanted a change and people doesn't want to risk. Uh, so well, obviously I'm on a little... On a, or, uh, you're on a high you're it, saying. Yes. So you can have the Nariel Pani coconut water, Yelanir, uh, as we talk. You know, uh, Basant, what about accusations of family rule, like accusations of corruption against the DMK made by the Prime Minister and that kind of an aggressive campaign. Uh, are you worried that anti-incumbency at the local level could hurt? 
uh, the Congress or the ruling establishment here? No, not at all, not at all. Uh, because uh, the DMK party, uh, the ruling DMK party is doing a very good job. And here what happens is that Magali uh, Urumai the 1000 rupees what they gave for the women and the free bus services, all these have been impacted the women's uh, thing. So what happens is women polarizations have happened and people are also because uh, we know how the women uh, handle the families and all that. And this 1000 rupees is very, very helpful for them. So they were grateful or not. So uh, there is no anti-incumbency, even if, the, if there it is, it will not affect this election at all. What about issues like Kachativu, accusations against the Congress and the DMK of a 50-year-old issue being made by the BJP, issues like Sanatan Dharma, you don't see them polarizing the electorate, impacting the no, electorate? No, no, not at all, not at all. This Kachativu, why do you have to bring during this election? Uh, even Sanatan Dharma, whatever it is, whatever it is, don't make it as a political, you know. See, what, what happens to the border issues? See, Arunachal Pradesh, you know, like how many square kilometers have been occupied by China. But PM didn't talk about it. And Manipur issue, PM didn't talk about it. Uh, Demontation, he said, what he said and what happened is totally different. He didn't talk about it. You're saying there won't be any big impact uh, later this evening, Udayanadi camp, Stalin will be campaigning for you. If there is one defining theme of the elections, Lok Sabha 2024 in Kanyakumari, what would that be? The major issues in Kanyakumari, that is for the politically you're saying or... Uh, for the electorate, for the population here. The, the, definitely, the, the overall the people they wanted the change and they want development, they want employment, uh, they want recognition, they want uh, to be recognized. So in, uh, considering all these facts, our uh, India alliance has become very strong in Kanyakumari. So our, 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 uh, we would say uh, out of 40, out of 40, and we'll form the government in the center. Okay, you're saying 40 out of 40 here, forming government in the center, we'll see out there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, quickly, one final question. Uh, you know, the fact that the India Alliance doesn't have a prime ministerial candidate, uh, you know, is that is that an impediment given the fact that there seems to be an anti-Modi plank, but there is no concrete solution on the offer? No, no, uh, we, uh, we, um, I wouldn't say like that because here the anti-Modi wave is huge, so there's going to be a change. So, uh, in, according to us, Rahul Gandhi is our Prime Minister candidate and we are campaigning for Rahul Gandhi ji early. But uh, it is all uh, to the India Alliance heads to decide upon it. But we are working on the uh, uh, making Rahul ji as a Prime Minister. You have taken the seat after the demise of your father. Uh, you won the by-election. Have you become a full-time politician now? Have you gotten used to being a full-time politician? Yes, 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 sir. Uh, I would say uh, full-time uh, politician. I'm learning a lot of things, other because every day is a new day. Connecting with the people is totally different. There are different type of people, different type of request. But it is very, uh, I would say, I'm happy to be there, part of it. Vijay Vasanthe, the Congress candidate, he's the son of the late H. Vasant Kumar, who was the MP here, who won in 2019, the owner of Vasant & Co., a very famous uh, shop, a shopping complex in uh, across Tamil Nadu, has chains across Tamil Nadu. So that's Vijay Vasant, the competitor, the challenger to the Congress here is the BJP's Pun Radha Krishnan, who, as I mentioned at the start, has contested 10 times. He's won twice, 1999 and 2014. So, Hon Radhakrishnan uh, has consistently got a 30% vote. He's the old-time BJP leader who has come from the grassroots, who's built the party in this constituency here. He had a long an arduous campaign trail this afternoon across the villages uh, and I spoke to him on his campaign vehicle and I asked him what his secret of surviving summer heat in Kanyakumari during campaign trail and also what he thought of the Annamalai factor in Tamil Nadu politics which has been spoken about and whether the BJP can get a bump up from its 30% vote share. Remember, while the BJP has got that vote share, it's often found it to get difficult to get past the post, to get that incremental vote. And that's the challenge for the party here in Kanyakumari. He sounded confident and said, this time there is an X factor in these elections that could possibly take the BJP past the post. Listen in. Dar in the dar in the 
While the BJP has had that 30% vote share in Kanyakumari consistently, given the communal nature of the constituency in terms of the communal divide, you have a 51% population of Muslims and Christians. Is the BJP stuck there and is not able to move forward? Earlier it was like that. But this time we are seeing a uh, total change in the whole constituency. All community people, cutting across caste, religion, everything, they want BJP to win in this constituency because they want development. What has been spoken about this Annamalai factor in Tamil Nadu? What do you think of that? I mean, is there a is there a, a some value addition that he's brought? Definitely, sir. Definitely. The last two years, almost two years, he is working hard. He did Padayatra. It was welcomed by the people of Tamil Nadu. Everywhere, not only in Kanyakumari, every district, people are in front of BJP because of anomaly also. That is one of the main factors we are uh, growing up. Okay. You know, you just spoke about the communal polarization aspect. The opposition blames the BJP of divisive politics. That the only reason why you are able to hold a vote is on communal uh, lines. They are telling we are polarizing the Hindu votes. It is not so. We tried to polarize only the Hindu votes. It is very difficult to win here. What about the narrative saying that, you know, this is anti-Dravidian, Dravidian ideology is in threat. You don't see that really communally polarizing or, or you know, polarizing the electorate in favor of the Dravidian parties? So what is the difference between Dravidian and Aryan and other things? See, for some political reasons, they created this. My opinion is, they failed in all their efforts. See, when Kalangir was there, Karnani was there, he, he did something. But in these two years, people are seeing the difference between the BJP government, uh, BJP governing states and the Tamil Nadu. They won the double-edged government for Tamil Nadu also. You're a long-time observer. Be honest. What's your prediction for the BJP? Because most people say, while they may have a small bump in vote share, it doesn't seem to be translating into seats. What would you say? Uh, <clears throat> 2014, we formed our own alliance in Tamil Nadu. That alliance got 19% vote. 19% vote. And we got three seats. Kanyakumari, Dharmapuri, Puducherry. Out of 40, we got three seats. At that time, DMK got 23% vote. But they couldn't get even a single seat here. So people are waiting for a change. They are searching for the good leadership. Annamali is there. Modi is there. So they failed in their Dravidian ideology. Okay, this is your 10th time as a candidate here for the BJP. You've been successful twice as an MP. Uh, what's the defining feature of Kanyakumari 2024 from Pun Radhakrishnan's point of view? Sir, first we had to unite the people. The division was there since 19... 80. We want a peaceful district. We want development for all the communities. Definitely after this election, the people of Tamil Nadu, particularly our Kandiya district, is going to see a model, model district for communal harmony and everything. It wasn't wrong to leave the AIDMK alliance? Coming elections you are telling? No, in these elections, would it have been stronger had you been with the AIADMK? Sir, we have our own alliance. Why should we bother about other alliance? One final question, sir. What is the secret of surviving a campaign in such hot weather? You've done this for many, many years. What is the secret tip to staying healthy in such hot weather? Sir, this is not only election. 
फॉर मी दिस इज एन ऑपॉर्चुनिटी दिस सी माई पीपल माई पीपल फॉर द लॉस्ट मोर देन फोर्टी फाइव ईयर्स आई एम सर्विंग फॉर दम दे आर वेटिंग द हॉट वेदर ऑन द रोड्स आई एम अंडर शेल्टर सो दे आर ग्रेट Well, that was Pon Radha Krishnan of the BJP. Remember, when we say BJP Congress contest, it doesn't mean that the DMK, AIDMK are in, are irrelevant. The AIDMK this time has fielded Basili and Nazareth, like a, a young candidate, like they fielded everywhere else in Tamil Nadu. And the DMK is a major player here in terms of assembly segments. The DMK still holds, and the AIDMK still holds maximum vote share. when it comes to even a constituency like kanyakumari but in the tamil nadu context which is overwhelmingly dmk versus ai dmk this is one constituency where the congress and the bjp have their own hold that's that's what when that's what i mean by saying it's a congress versus bjp contest so it's a fascinating contest for the southernmost lok sabha constituency of the indian mainland and we'll keep a close watch of it whether it's the old war horse pon radha krishnan or the young businessman turned uh, politician vijay vasant who's going to pick the race or is it going to be a third person like basilian nazareth of the aia dmk we'll keep every track and turn of the kanyakumari contest in focus but shifting over from tamil nadu to karnataka where deputy chief minister dk shiv kumar got notices from the lok ayukta for the case that was transferred by the karnataka government from the cbi to the lok ayukta remember there is a legal challenge as well going on in that but more interestingly dk shiv kumar is fighting a strong contest for his brother dk suresh in the bengaluru rural constituency that's the only seat the congress won in 2019 and this time the bjp jds alliance has fielded deva gauda hd deva gauda's son in law dr manjunath they are turning it into a prestige contest for bengaluru rural there's been an enormous amount of campaigning by the bjp stop leadership in bengaluru rural it's part of the vokaliga heartland and dk shiv kumar will have to retain it to prove a point about his power in that region remember these are regions where the congress swept the assembly election can it do it again like it has done so many times before in bengaluru rural that's the question my colleague pratibha raman caught up with dk shiv kumar for this exclusive conversation dk shiv kumar so first of all eid mubarak to you and second of all so how confident are you with the lok sabha election i am not only confident i'm more confident that whatever we have promised we have delivered there is a big wave of the congress party here big wave of guarantee and big wave on the confidence of the people of this uh, uh, state and the government that uh, whatever we just look at the development of every individual economically due to the price rise all of them was suffering we are able to sort it out now i'm very happy mr malikajan karge ji and rahul ji has signed a check check to the people of this country that they are going to give 1 lakh rupees per year ma lakshmi bhagya lakshmi and for use 1 lakh rupees and 25 lakh insurance to every citizen who will be suffering on various health insurance schemes this is a very big boost what the congress party has given to the entire country so there's also a lokayukta notice that has been issued to you do you feel that that is going to be an impediment ahead of the lok sabha election of course see i think even cbi also though it withdrew the case and handed over to lokayukta cbi also has uh, uh, going on investigating they have issued notice to various of my friends and my institutions and a lot of things at the same time lokayukta is also doing it yesterday night i got an information i just look at it i am ready to reply to whatever the information is because all my records is nothing private it is a, it is on a public domain it is been uh, uh, my system of uh, declaring is different and others hide the information but i do not hide the information i know what is the law of this country uh, everything is on lokayukta my documents everything is on income tax everything is on the election commission apart from that 
nothing i have hidden and i will not hide it also so today mr yadurappa held a press conference spoke about modi's guarantees do you feel that this is going to be a congress guarantees versus modi guarantees ahead of the lok sabha election also mr yadurappa seeking apology from dk shukumar as well as uh, rahul gandhi for demanding or protesting against the closure of the hcl see let it not discuss hcl we'll discuss later let it discuss about the whatever the promises they had given in the early election early early election number 1 the second question you are asking on the modi guarantee what is what is modi guarantee if modi guarantee is going to fill anyone's stomach we agree to it but modi guarantee 10 years there was in rule no stomach has been filled no one has been benefited even at the time of corona 20 lakh crore was been announced but nothing reached a common man i think uh, I, they are trying to just uh, they have copied our congress guarantee not a bjp guarantee now it is a modi guarantee so some of the surveys of the congress government has suggested that the bjp as well as the jds if the votes were to transfer to each other it might not benefit the congress i think it is a closed era of the uh, jds and bjp bjp themselves have agreed that they are going to be defeated though they have got so they have gone to the jds number 1 Uh, bjp knows that uh, they have lost the face of all the parliament members that is why they changed uh, 50% of the candidates in karnataka so my final so, question will your cm aspirants so, 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 aspirations so, 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 be fulfilled so, 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 after lok sabha sir so, 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 will your cm aspirations be fulfilled after lok sabha that was mr dk shivkumar talking about how confident the congress is ahead of the lok sabha election though was pretty much tight lipped when we asked him about the cm aspirations ahead of the lok sabha election with camera person go with pratima raman in bengaluru for ndtv well he's left the most interesting political question unanswered uh, the impact of the lok sabha elections on state politics but remember the congress putting up a very strong fight in karnataka against the bjp there in the 28 lok sabha constituencies but shifting focus to telangana and to the first family of the brs and its troubles continue k kavita has been taken into cbi custody for at the tihar jail today she was questioned by the cbi in that liquor scam in which she has been facing ED charges and ED questioning and she was in Tihar jail custody where she's been taken into custody by the CBI after questioning my colleague Uma Sudhir who's been tracking all those details there joins us live uh, from Hyderabad Uma the real political consequences of these cases that the BRS is facing on the one hand an electoral battle to remain relevant in telangana politics on the other these cases for the first family Yes, indeed. Uh, the CBI has today issued the order saying that uh, she will be arrested, and tomorrow in court is when they will seek the custody of uh, Kavita. And if she goes into the CBI custody, they want to confront her with the new evidence that they say has come to light. They have already questioned her inside jail after having got uh, permission from the uh, special court uh, to question her inside Tihar jail, and they had confronted her. We are told with evidence of the WhatsApp chats uh, of uh, her former chartered accountant, Gucci Babu. Remember that. Uh, not just kavita but also manish sisodia sanjay singh as well as uh, vijayanayar were have been arrested both by the cbi and the ed and the three others who were with her in the south group which is alleged to operate 100 crore rupees as a uh, bribe uh, to the uh, delhi government to have the formulation of the uh, liquor policies according to uh, according to the allegations they were, all three of them have turned approvers and that's what kavita has spoken about politically speaking in the run up to parliament elections uh, the uh, the first family whether it is ksr or ktr are now not really talking about kavita or about her being victimized so to speak by the central agencies they are focusing in fact on the issues here of the people and saying that it is the brs that can solve those issues and attacking both the congress as well as the bjp on that front interestingly also i must say that uh, kavita had in a note to the uh, agency said that it is only based on the statements of people that she is being in fact uh, incarcerated and kept in jail and that there is no 
trail of evidence against her on the day that bail was uh, not granted to her rather rejected and her uh, custody was in fact extended uh, the exceptions that under pmla that women get even that was not given to her because the court felt or the argument given was that she is someone who is powerful and she has agency and she does not fit into that category where uh, she needs to be given bail because she is a woman and they said that it is not obligatory or mandatory on right. her part kavita says that she has not destroyed any evidence that she has cooperated with the investigating agencies and she also claims that the telephones that the agency says were destroyed she had in fact presented before them and she is willing to share all the evidence of course the uh, investigating agencies have said that when she came back with the phones they were formatted and that all that uh, information was lost so politically very clearly this is linked right. also to the aap party and delhi uh, chief minister kejriwal as well and that's why this becomes even more of a naughty issue politically ish as well back to you that's right uma will keep a close track of it uh, it is obviously a politically sensitive case the heat is on from the ed on the aap as well as the brs but the heat is on politicians as well campaigning in a hot hot humid summer how do they cope with it we posed that question to several of the candidates we met along the way in our journey on the southern view and these are some of the reactions how are you handling the heat it's very hot here and it's so crowded welcome to chennai we are dealing with you Manikam Tagore, literally a hot, 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 hot campaign trail here, isn't it? Just we are entering into the Chitrai month, therefore it will be hot only. Delhi plays a vital role in this hot summer, but uh, we've been cooled down by the people's response. Arey wa, what a, what a thing for the summer, ah! Huh? This is the best thing for the summer. Yeah, I can have this in one hand and then do the interview with you also on the other hand. Well, hot, hot summer there, but uh, that's all we have time for on the Southern View. Here's uh, our wishes on Eid Mubarak to all our viewers, and we leave you with these fascinating images on Eid. The news and updates continue here on NDTV. Thanks for watching.